All right, hello everyone, and welcome to our latest webinar, Finding Health Information for, pa uh, for Patients. I'm Maureen Babb. And I'm Angela Osterreicher. And we will be hosting the webinar for you today. Um, so uh, in terms of what we're going to cover today, we're going to briefly introduce you to the WRHA Virtual Library if you aren't already familiar with it. Um, we're going to take you through uh, the Virtual Library's Patient Education Toolkit, which is a valuable tool for when you need to access or discover patient ed uh, education information. Um, we will highlight some specific patient education resources which are linked to on the toolkit. Um, we will show you how to find patient education information in UpToDate, uh, which may be a tool that you are already using. Um, and then we'll give you some general tips on finding additional patient education resources. And we'll let you know what the virtual library can do for you, aside from have a toolkit about patient education. And then we're going to alert you about the upcoming library closure. And by library closure, we mean holiday closure. Uh, and so there will be a brief period of time during which we are not open to do some of the services that we discuss today. Mm -hmm. So what is the virtual library? Uh, we provide library services to WRHA staff, eligible community health agencies and personal care homes. We provide access to a number of otherwise paywalled electronic resources, um, databases like Medlines and all that sort of thing. Um, and we also provide library services such as literature searches, document delivery and education and training sessions like this one. Uh, so I'll pass it over to Angela now. Yeah. So patient education, you might be in a situation where you have to create uh, resources for your clients, or you might be in a situation where clients come to you with information or you need to direct them to information. Perhaps they've been newly diagnosed with something and they would like more information on it. So we'd like to help you with uh, where you can find this information and hopefully to make sure that uh, when you have that information that it is reliable. So on our homepage, uh, we have a couple of places. They're both the same uh, access points. Uh, the first one is the find information boxes down below. And along the top, we have tabs. Uh, that one there is find information as well. They both get you to the same places. And the reason I'm directing you here is because we have toolkits. And if you click on the box with the toolkits, that'll bring you to our page of toolkits. So these are the, what the toolkit is, is we've uh, looked at all the resources that we have uh, for the WRHA, uh, whether they're um, uh, databases or journals or uh, websites, books, uh, ebooks that we have. We've tried to pull all the information together based on a topic to make it simpler for you to find that information. These are just a few of the titles that we've created so far and we're really happy to do them in conjunction with our clients. So if any of you have a burning desire for another topic that we don't have up there, feel free to suggest it and we'd be happy to work with you on that. We do have one here that's for patient education. So if you click on that one, that opens up our patient education toolkit. And it's this one is done a little differently, but it's basically the same. So we have a few websites and Maureen will be going into some of those in a few minutes in more detail with you. So we have some general websites that we're recommending you can go to, as well as tools that you can use uh, and direct your your uh, patients too. Uh, but we've, what we've also done here is we've created patient uh, subject specific handouts that you could give to your patients as well. Uh, there's a few topics there that you can see. The list is actually longer than that. And on the uh, right hand side are the multilingual patient education ones that we have. Uh, so that they are available in different languages. And just to let you know we're not we don't speak those languages. We've just found the information for you. So if we go into one of those, just to give an idea of what it looks like, uh, we've just given a few online resources and uh, books. And if we don't have the books, we've also listed them uh, for the public library books that you can recommend, for instance, on brain injury. So some good uh, association and uh, other 
foundation resources that uh, you can use yourself or direct your clients to. Yeah, and just like with the toolkits, if you want a new toolkit, if you didn't see a topic that you think that we should have subject-specific handouts for a patient to find additional information about, like if you wanted something on a specific type of cancer or, or something, uh, get in contact with us and we'll mm -hmm. be happy to build a new handout for you yes. for that sort of thing as well. Um, or in one of the resources itself, if you happen to notice that we're missing some key resource mm -hmm. that you happen to know exists, please, by all means, get in contact with yeah. us. Yeah. Um, so you saw on the left-hand side, sorry, <laughs> of the toolkit, uh, that there were those uh, links to patient education resources, and those are external websites that we don't manage, but that we do suggest as places for patients to go through. I'm not going to go through each and every one of them, but I'm going to highlight a few specific ones uh, that I think are particularly valuable and maybe not as well known to you as some of the other ones. Like there's one that's actually a WRHA resource, and you being with the WRHA, I suspect that you may already know about that one. Um, and so one of them is this Manitoba 211, and this is a way that your patients can find information, find services about um, specific topics. So you can see if they're dealing, if they're struggling with housing and homelessness, or if they need specific resources for youth, older adults, LGBTQS, uh, 2SQ+, the end of the acronym always changes, mm -hmm. um, uh, and post-evacuation resources, any of that sort of stuff for the province of Manitoba, you can punch in your postal code and they'll show you resources in the area um, that you can check out. Now, this isn't a comprehensive list of resources in the area and some of them are, uh, I would say they show limited results, but nonetheless, uh, your uh, patients can certainly go there and have a look and see what services are available to uh, very reasonable starting place, but it may not end up being a finishing place. <laughs> um, another resource that you can use is Medline Plus. Now this is put out by the National Library of Medicine in the United States, and it provides information that is geared at a level uh, towards patients, towards public education. Um, so it's high quality material because it is, of course, from the NLM and it's easy to comprehend. You can see here there are uh, information on different health topics and if you click on that, there's quite a variety of uh, different topics in there, uh, drugs and supplements and some videos and tutorials and information about medical tests, why you're getting them, what those tests entail. Um, so this is a a valuable resource that has a lot of information in it for people who need to know more. Um, so if you go into one of the topics here, so in this case I'd gone to that health topics button and then selected from a, a vastly long list, one at random, diabetic kidney problems. And so you can see there's basic information, there's a summary, there's uh, diagno information about the diagnosis and tests, what they are, um, Sorry, uh, um, what they are, why they're, um, why they're uh, being asked to request, why they're asking you to request the tests, um, statistics, research, information that they can look up to further their knowledge going forward. Um, another resource is a site called Get the Resort Research. Now, Get the Research is in some ways just a search engine. It's very, very simple, um, but it's structured in such a way that it, it contains peer-reviewed articles, peer-reviewed information, and it's presented in a way that is very user-friendly. So you show, you get to the site, and it's just this. It's just a search bar, and if you scroll down, you can find an FAQ. But whatever topic you put in, and they've got some suggestions there, vaccines and autism, how safe is bicycling or chocolate generally. Um, I chose to... Safe, safe, safe. <laughs> Of course, chocolate is super safe, and uh, with the holidays coming up, I've definitely been eating a lot of it. Um, so 
I've chosen to look up transgender children uh, and you can see that they've got on the side here, they've got a definition of transgender that's being pulled from Wikipedia, but it gives the person doing a search context for what they're uh, exploring. And then they've got uh, information, um, The as you scroll down, there can be more information, but there's, there's peer reviewed studies you can see there and it tells you what kind of study they are, if it's a review. Um, in some cases, it'll tell you about the quality of information that you're looking at. Um, and then the, in the FAQ section on the Get the Research page, there's guides on how to read scientific articles for people who aren't familiar with them. So some summaries are provided. Uh, they give the abstracts on the site itself. If people want to read further into the articles, there's I mean, it's, it's still material that's meant for, uh, for clinicians and for scholars, but there's guidance on how to look at this information and how to recognize good quality information. Um, another resource that we have is TREC, which stands for Translating Emergency Knowledge for Kids. Um, and this one is, is geared towards I guess, family-friendly instruction on how to deal with emergency situations for children. So anaphylaxis, for example. Um, uh, now there's more to the website. Our, the link on our page takes us to the consumer health section, so the patients. Uh, there's more on the track page, including uh, information for clinicians and things like physician orders that you can fill out so that they can provide it if they have to take their child to the emergency department or anything like that. Um, but in the consumer health information, they've got these informative videos, they've got a few handouts, they've got um, summaries about key conditions that children might have and what it means and what it means for you as a parent, what your responsibilities are, what you need to be aware of, what the symptoms are. And the videos that they have are very cute, actually, and I highly recommend watching some of them. But they're an informative and um, a, an informative tool that doesn't require a great deal of reading or, or um, anything like that. So another thing that you may or may not be aware of, you may have used UpToDate. If you have used UpToDate before, great. If you haven't used UpToDate uh, before, it is a, a point of care resource that in, is in some ways a, an encyclopedia with information about different health topics. Um, we had previously done a webinar on UpToDate, uh, and you can check that out on our library training page. It's still up there. It's called UpToDate with UpToDate. It was one of our first webinars, so it's early in the list. Um, but assuming that you know how to use UpToDate, um, you go into UpToDate, you do a search, fairly straightforward. And as a general rule, if you do a search in UpToDate, the information you either need is it's there or it isn't. And if it isn't there, finessing your search isn't going to give you a great deal more information than what you had initially done. So in this case, I've done a search for diabetes and unsurprisingly, there's a lot of information available for diabetes, but you can see at the top of the bar there that there's, uh, right now there's the blue selected all, but you can see adult, pediatric, patient, and graphics. Now in this particular instance, what you're interested in is the patient section. So if you click on that, you're taken to, um, again, a, a narrowed list of topics. And you can see patient education. Um, and there's sort of two sections of patient education. There's the basics and the beyond the basics. And beyond the basics is for people who want a little bit more information or are already familiar with what you're talking about. But the basics is for, um, you know, people who are new to a condition who just need some information. So if you click on one of these, you're uh, taken into patient education, diabetic, ketoacidosis, the basics. Yeah. And so it provides you some basic information, unsurprisingly, I guess, from the title. Uh, you've got a what is, you've got 
what causes it, what are the symptoms, information about whether they should be seeing a doctor or a nurse, what are the tests for it, um, how is it treated, how can it be prevented, and then a further reading section more on this topic. Um, and so you can print this off, you can hand it out to your patients, that's fine. You can also uh, share it with them. And if you press the share button, it'll send them an email with a link to this page. Now, if you do that, um, all the little related topics that may be helpful for them to look at, they won't be able to access those because they don't have a subscription to up to date. So if you want them to read those related topics, you need to also share those ones with them directly. Um, and it is available in Spanish. And it is available in Spanish. <laughs> American resource, obviously. Yes, yes. Uh, and so that is up to date. Uh, the Beyond the Basics is very similar, uh, same sort of rules, but just more information. And not every topic that is covered in UpToDate has patient education options available, but a lot of the more common conditions do. Yeah. And these are written by clinicians. Yes, yes, they are written by clinicians. And you've, you can see there they've got the written by the doctors and editors at UpToDate. If you click on that, you can actually see who's writing them. Yeah. And, and usually at the bottom it tells you when it was last updated yes. as well. Yeah. So... Finding more information for patients, or at least evaluating it. So if you want to go to the next screen. Um, sometimes uh, you need to find other resources for your clients or your patients have seen something in the news and you want to direct them to more reliable information. So lots of times uh, people resort to Googling and if you do that, you have to be aware that uh, there can be a lot of misinformation. So we've got a few, just a few basic tips here on what to look for. Uh, the first thing that you're going to want to think about is who's paying for this site and what is their motive for having this site. So just figure out if there's a financial or a political purpose for this site. Um, I certainly would be looking at .com with a, with a weary, a careful, eye. careful <laughs> eye, careful eye, yes. Uh, but basically, if you look for, you know, .edu, education, university sites, or uh, well-known societies, uh, like the Cancer Society, um, or if you look for association sites, uh, that would be your best bet. Uh, they are usually experts on certain topics and will have lots of good information on their websites. Um, they will... Yeah, um, th the associations and societies generally are mm -hmm. focused on a condition in a way yeah. that other resources just aren't. So they'll have tons of information. They they won't just have, you know, a handout. They'll have several handouts at several yeah. different levels. They'll have not just handouts, but reports, brochures. White papers. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, government sites as well, I would trust. So, you know, universities, uh, associations, societies, government sites uh, would be ones that I would Tend, lean towards. Mm -hmm. And also if for further understanding of how to evaluate sites on Medline Plus, which you had mentioned, they mm -hmm. have a surfing, uh, a guide to surfing the web, which uh, is, is usually something that uh, librarians recommend people use. So it'll give you a bit more detail. Just be cognizant of what site you're on and see if they update it, if they say what they're about, how often they update, do they have a policy on how they select things and what they're showing you. Yeah, one of the other things to consider is to look for specifically local organizations because that might help with not only what is available on this topic, but what is available to this person in this city right now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So. so we can help you as well. Uh, you don't have to do uh, the searching for your clients or for yourself. Uh, if you need information that you need to pass on to them, we're happy to do literature searches for you. 
uh, you can access the databases that we have for you yourself, but we also have access to other databases because we are part of the University of Manitoba. So we do have a broader range of databases that we can access, so we're happy to do that for you. Uh, we're happy to work with you in building any toolkits or, or uh, patient handouts uh, and adding them to our web page there. Uh, and we'll give you any the results of our, our searches. We usually provide you with a Word document, which will have citations on it. Uh, you would go through them and decide which ones you're interested in, and then you could select from those and uh, request those documents to look at in more detail. So again, feel free to make any suggestions so that uh, we can uh, grow the patient education toolkit uh, that best meets your needs. Yes, um, and so as a last note, as I said, we will be closed for the holidays. Um, we will be closing at 2 o'clock p.m. on Friday, December 20th, and we will remain closed until January 2nd, 2020. Um, now, that's not to say that you can't still access the library. You can. You can still access all our online resources, but all those handy little literature searches and any sort of document delivery, anything that involves us actively doing something for you, that won't be available during this time period. Um, so, happy holidays, have a good winter break, or not a break if you don't have a break, but, you know, have a good, a good holiday season, and, uh, yes, image attributions and our contact information. Um, we also have a newsletter that we send out monthly, um, that you can sign up for if you want to know what's going on at the virtual library. Yes, you can find out if we have a new toolkit coming up or what our next uh, seminar session will be on. Mm -hmm. um, so that is it, and we will see you at our next session. Thanks. Bye. Bye.